Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors. I'm working on the KA2002A this morning and I'm recapping on the main board about two-thirds of the way through. I've changed out all the C458 transistors and yikes these transistors they all have black oxide on the legs. You know, this will be a nice quiet unit when it's done. The other driver transistors are like C721s or something like that. Um, they'll be fine. Unless there's an issue, but so far everything's been good. They're all the same output transistors, I checked that. I'm not sure how much soldering goes into one of these. There's the back panel. You can kind of see where I've been working on it. And as I go along, so I did the phono stage first. If I see any bad connections, some of these stakes were a bit loose. Fix those up. I noticed one thing right away. So, I have a KA2002 schematic, and then on the back next one along is a KA2000. KA2002 and the KA2002A. The only ones available out there. But I notice in this section here, so basically these are separate boards on previous models. From here to here was the preamplifier driver board. That was the first transistor. There's some of the traces are different in that circuit. It could have been an earlier one. I don't think it was actually, but um, it is different than the schematic, but not and not something that you can't figure out. It has two anti-oscillation caps here that I took out and put back in. On the rest of the board, they're incorporated into the design. They may have had an issue in production. And I looked at a KA2002A that I did three years ago, and it doesn't have those here. They're actually on top of the board. That must be what happened. This is, uh, they were incorporated into the design, they were on top. Whatever. There's always running changes at a factory. Uh, one thing you gotta, there's different, how do I put it? Well, let's go back again. This type of board, the way they did it, they, the component was inserted and then it was wave soldered, the whole board. The components are then snipped off. Um, they come straight through and they're not bent over. On the older boards, which like the KA2000, getting into the TK series of receivers, those ones, the foil is very fragile on them, but they have the leads bent over and soldered by hand. A little different design. Here's one I wanted to ask everyone out there. Get a little conversation going. At what age did you get your first soldering iron? I got mine when I was 12. Bought from Radio Shack. I guess my parents figured it was safer than a shotgun. I don't know. At the time, I was always like, oh, I want this, I want that. Um, I actually had to buy it with my own money. But I was, I was working on stuff. I had some cash to spend on that. It was an investment because I was really getting, especially at the time, TV sets and tube radios. And that first realistic iron, pencil iron, uh, 25 water, really, it went for quite a few years. Um, it actually helped me land the career of my choice. Well, a really good job at the phone company. More so than having college. Okay, here's a very quick rundown of the story. I have been soldering on stuff, like I say, since I was about 12 or so years old. Um, I get 10 years later, well, a little more than 10 years, but I'm at Bell Canada. I've only been there one year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, boss comes out one morning and he said, who here knows how to solder? And I was the only one to put my hand up. Everybody else is going, oh, I don't like soldering irons. They're dangerous, blah, blah, blah. He said, okay, and he wrote my name down on something. At the time, I was on a crew that was doing toll cable locating out in the country for a road widening. It was an old lead toll cable that had been installed in the 1930s. And it ran from Montreal all, all the way to Windsor, 
through different cities almost like a pipeline but that's another story um, a few weeks later he comes out and he said Brian can I talk to you afterwards and I'm thinking uh oh what have I done and I went in his office and he said are you familiar with network services and I said well yes and he said there's a job opening that's come up he said we we need you on some cutovers some basically we're taking out some old equipment some new stuff coming in some um, it would be in Waterloo it would be in and then basically it ended up being all over the province like well you start out that's what they do today they start you nearby and you just go and work on these offices and he said would you like that he goes as a substantial raise in pay it actually was a substantial raise in pay almost double and there were some complaints about it because some felt I had jumped the queue. But anyway, I had, I did have electronics from college and I did have the soldering skill and that was people who said, no, I didn't want to, don't want to solder. I turned, in effect, in the company's eyes, it turned down the job and that's how I got it. But anyway, I go into the first office and there's row upon row, a hundred feet long, twelve feet high of connection bays filled with relays and vacuum tubes and all that stuff and all the cross connection stuff, some are zip gunned but the majority are soldered in that office and some of the equipment had to be moved to make way for new stuff I soldered in the months ahead thousands of solder joints and a lot of it on live equipment because they couldn't shut it down um, and it actually the boss would come along later and he'd look he actually took his glasses off and he'd do this use those a magnifier because it was important first of all you didn't want to dribble anything into a relay you also um, weren't allowed to wear short pants even though those equipment bays are hot because they didn't want you to burn your legs that's something I learned when I was younger don't solder wearing short pants. Anyway, I just thought you'd find that funny. That's really how I got good practice for soldering. Um, practice, how can I put it this way? Practicing something on actual equipment is better in many ways than college. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening.